Good day, Grade Twelves. My name is Kadian Mazokere. I'd like to welcome you to lesson number seventeen from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. I've written Economics Grade Ten, Eleven, and Twelve. I've also published Business Studies Grade Eleven and Twelve for Mr. Tawedze Roshoko. Well, in this lesson, we're going to continue from where we left off in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we introduced you to features underpinning forecasting. So we introduced you the methods that we use in economics to predict uh, how economic activity is going to be in the future. So we, we said we use um, the, the, what do you call it, leading indicators, lagging indicators, coincident indicators, and composite. So in this lesson, we're going to proceed and conclude features underpinning forecasting. But in this one, we're going to look now at other tools and techniques that we use to forecast. So the first one that we're going to look at is the length. So yes, in uh, we use the length. The length is measured from a peak to a peak or from a trough to a trough. So we can use that to predict the next length. Uh, and uh, we're going to also move on to amplitude which measures the intensity of a business cycle so it is measured from a trough to a peak or it's that vertical distance between a peak and a trough we're going to use that so we can use that to predict the next one and as we do that we are using a technique that is called extrapolation which is using what we know to predict what we don't know i'm going to show you how we do it and then we're going to use also a trend line uh, which shows the general direction in which the economy is heading. So you will see how we can use a trend line to predict the future. And then the last one is we are going to use uh, moving average. So thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for watching my videos, commenting on my videos and so on. Uh, I, I, I want to show my appreciation to you right now and uh, please share the videos to your classmates if you are a student if you are a teacher please share to your students let them know there is um, someone who's committed to making every student in south africa pass and that is why my brand is called the distinction bound student just think about that for a second uh, my goal is to influence learners to excel so the distinction bound student is all about distinctions okay so we not we we don't want you to just pass we want you to excel so uh, stay with us throughout the year watch videos i'll always be updating if there are any changes you can still use my videos from last year if there are any changes i i recommend that you keep checking so maybe you can turn on that notification bell so that whenever i upload you get to see what it is that i've uploaded thank you so much uh, stay tuned So as usual, we start with our homework. So this is what I gave you in the previous lesson. The GDP of a country is an example of a DASH economic indicator, and then distinguish leading business cycles from lagging. So this one was an easy one. I'm just going to show you the answers and then uh, you can mark yourself. All right, so you can pause the video. I'm not going to wait for everything. All right, let's move on to the last part of features underpinning forecasting and uh yes so in today's lesson as you have seen in the, from the introduction we are going to conclude okay so what is it what are the things that we use to focus so the length and the amplitude of the business cycle all right so we're going to start off with the length what is it so this is the time it takes for a business cycle to move through one complete cycle okay uh, as you have learned by now, remember we have time here, we have economic activity here. So I'll just say GDP. Okay, so this here is what? It's a peak. And this here is a trough. And this here is another peak. And if I continue, this here is a, a trough. So the length of a business cycle is measured from peak to peak, this one, or from trough to trough. If you look at this definition, it, it, it is the time it takes for a business cycle to move through one complete cycle. So it is measured from peak to peak or trough to trough. 
in other words, a complete business cycle has all four phases. So it is a recession, it has a depression, it has a recovery, and it has a prosperity. So we have all four phases in a complete cycle. So that is basically what it is. If a business cycle has the length of 10 years, okay, fine. Let me, let me show you what I mean, uh, how we can use. Remember, we are trying to focus, okay? So let's assume, okay, we are already here. And today it's the 8th of February. So we'll say we are in February. And so this is like January. This is like December going back, right? Uh, this is November. This is October going back like that. So what is this? We call it the past. Okay. And what is it that we are trying to predict? Obviously, we are trying to predict the future and we don't know the future. So after February, what comes? March comes. Uh, April comes. May comes like that. June and so on. So we are trying to predict the future. We, we, we're trying to use, okay, fine. I, I said it before, uh, this technique of using past information to predict the future is called extrapolation, but, uh, let me not talk about that right now. Okay. So going to my thing of, uh, January, February, March, April, May. So we are in February right now. So let's take this length. Uh, so we can take this length and put it here. Okay, fine. Let me take this one here and uh, put it here. Okay. So I'm trying to predict using what we know, which is this history here. And we take this one also and we use it to predict this part. So as a result, okay, maybe if I'm using the same pen, it, it might not make a lot of sense. Okay. Let me try this one. So as a result, if we, you see, and then I predict the next length using the previous one. So I'm predicting that by this time here, we will have reached a peak. And then I use this length again to predict the next draft. And then we have it like that. So already it we if you can see it will be more like we are anticipating that in the month of may we'll be reaching a trough okay of course it doesn't happen this fast but i'm just trying to uh, make a model that makes it easy for you to understand the concept of us using a length to predict Okay, so me saying we're in February and we're trying to predict March, April, May, I'm trying to show you that we can use a length to predict the future. And so if we are predicting the future, what are we doing? We are, what's the word? We are forecasting. Okay. So just like the geologists will tell us it's going to rain tomorrow, there's a cold front coming. How do they know? Of course, I don't know how they know. Uh, I, I wonder how they know. But when economists also say uh, we are going through a recession, but it's not even done yet. What is it that they are using to say it's not even done yet? Are they trying to make people panic or are they something that they see that we don't see, that others don't see? Of course, they is, they're using uh, what they know to predict what is unknown. And so these predictions are very, very important because uh, we can make informed decisions. Okay, so if a business cycle has a length of 10 years, it, it can be predicted that you see, yes, that 10 years will pass before successive peaks uh, or troughs in the economy, right? Uh, longer cycles show strength and uh, cycles can, or can, can overshoot. That's true. Uh, ways to measure the length. Okay, so we have crisis to crisis, historical records, consensus on business experience. And then the next term is the amplitude. And uh, so with the amplitude, I'm also going to draw another business cycle model here. 
okay then we have our trend line okay i forgot to put it in the previous one like that okay so the same technique that i used before uh so this one here it will be this is our amplitude okay so from a trough to a peak so it measures this vertical distance here between a peak and a trough so just like my previous example let's say this is where we are we're in february so we can try to use this trough to okay so if we place it here and here you see something like this so we can we can then predict that the future is going to be like that okay so this intensity here just if you if you remember what i did there or or, or maybe what i'm doing there is not too clear okay let me just do one like this so here oh this one makes sense yeah so here what do we have we have this distance here so if we are to measure it and say it's four centimeters for instance okay so we can take it ne? and then put it somewhere again and measure another another four centimeters from here something like that okay so this will help us to predict the next intensity so if this is four centimeters this one also we use it four centimeters so we are using this to predict the the next intensity of a cycle just like we did with the length but here we are now using an amplitude so if we use a couple of tools and techniques together it might help us to predict uh you know close to accurate uh accu accurately uh, of course we are not going to be 100 percent accurate like uh if i'm going to show you moving average as well you will see that we are not going to be 100 percent accurate all the time but it could because just like the geologists as well sometimes they tell you it's going to rain and it never rains or it actually does the opposite okay so all these things they are not 100 percent accurate but they can help us to predict if I may say. So it is the difference between the total output between a peak and a trough. It measures the distance of the oscillation of a, a variable from the trend line. It is the intensity, uh, I've been saying this over and over again, of the upswing and downswing uh, in the business, uh, in, in, in economic activity, sorry. A large amplitude during an upswing indicates strong underlying forces which result in longer cycles uh, the larger the amplitude the more extreme the changes that may occur uh, or extent of change eg during an upswing uh, in during an upswing inflation may increase from five percent to ten percent that is a hundred percent increase so uh, then moving on to the next one which is a trend line uh, we've been seeing the trend. The trend line is easy for for like. It's easy uh, if 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 you hear the word. So we are in February, right? If you hear the word trend, just what does that word mean? All right. So this is where we are. So look at the trend. It shows already where we are going and how things are going. So if we just use the trend line to predict, we can just predict it's going to follow the same trend. And so when it comes to uh, peaks and troughs and all that, we can model them around the trend, you see? So the trend line is the easiest one to explain in this uh, amongst these, uh, because it's, uh, look at it. So it is a line showing the general direction in which fluctuations seem to be heading. Economists look at the performance of the economy over the past few years and then predict a future trend. It usually has a positive slope, of course, uh, because the production capacity of a country increases over time. If you look at uh, times when our parents were growing, uh, were growing up and so on, uh, production was not as, as fast as it is today. Look at today, 
how much is produced on a daily basis it's not mainly because we are more of course population is growing and all that but the main reason is because over time generally production seems to grow so it's mostly a positive slope and when you see a negative one over a long time whew, that's bad so also known as the long-term uh, growth potential of the economy trends are useful because they indicate the general direction in which okay where is my okay there general direction in which the economy is moving it indicates the rate of increase or decrease in the level of output then the next one is what we have been doing all this time uh all this time we said we are in February. What is it that we used? We used the length, we used amplitude, we used a trend line up until this moment. So this technique of using what we know, past data, uh, trends, and by assuming that the trend will continue so uh, and make prediction about the future. So we use what we know. We, we use the length, the amplitude, the trend line. We use moving average. We use a lot of things. We use what we know and we try to predict uh, March, April, May, June, July, next year, next uh, two years like that. So that technique of using what we know to predict the future, that whole technique is called extrapolation. And so this one is very easy to understand because that's basically what we've been doing. Because when I was using the length to predict the future, that technique is extrapolation. When I use the amplitude, when I use the trend line, so uh, means to estimate something unknown from uh, facts, or information that is known so what is it that we know we know that the previous length was three months or the previous length was okay three months is ridiculous 48 months and so we predict that the next one could be more or less the same so that technique of using the previous length to predict the next come on it's extrapolation so eg if uh, it becomes clear that the business cycle has passed through a trough and has entered a boom phase uh, forecasters may predict that the economy will grow in the uh, in the months that follow so them doing that what are they doing there that's extrapolation so it is also used to make economic predictions in other settings eg prediction of future share prices and then the last one is moving average and uh, for moving average let me give you examples i hope i'll get space here okay um let's say we have january february march april may okay let me not go that far and uh, let's say we have we had uh, 265 maybe billion uh, gdp uh, okay the goods and services produced the total value of goods and services produced in january was worth 250 65 billion and for february it was 280 and for march it was 270 okay if let's say april was 280 okay sorry uh, i would like to use a different pen for april 280 and may let's say 285 ah oh, i took the same one 285 okay so but i want to assume that we are in march and so we don't know april we don't know may uh and so let's say these figures are going to come out later on in april later on in may but we are in March and we have information for January, February and March, right? And so what we do with moving average, we take these three months, we put them together. Let me take a calculator quickly and add them up. Okay. And then after that, I then divide by three months. Okay. It gives me here. Let me use a different pen. I'm running out of pens to use um let's say it gives me okay it's actually giving me 271 so this 271 is our prediction it's our forecast for april
But of course, April is going to come out with something else, which is 280. But what we did here, we used these three. We found the average for these three. We used that to predict April. And if we are going to predict May, we are no longer including January. We're now starting from February up until April. And we, we don't use this prediction. We use the actual, which is the 280. So if I add 280, 270, and 280, uh, let me see, add them up, divide by 3, it gives me here 277. Okay, so this 277 is our prediction or it's our forecast for May, something like that. But then this one then is what? The actual. So like I said, remember I told you if I give you an example with moving average, uh, it's, it's going to also confirm that uh, these predictions are not always 100% accurate, but they serve a certain purpose. Okay, so this is the method of you repeatedly calculating a series of different average values, just like I was doing, along a time series to produce a smooth curve. And so we have four main concepts of average. We have the arithmetic one, which is what I was using. Uh, you add them up. You see here we have four, uh, four, three, five, seven, six. If you add these up, you get 30. And if you divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the six here, you get five. So these five, if this was January, February, March, april may june so we predict that july will be a five something like that okay we can use the median uh and then here we have this number here that's our 25 we can use a mode e.g the number that occurs more often we can use that one and then we can use a geometric one uh, which is a type of mean or average uh, which indicates the central tendency or typical value of a set of numbers by using a product of their values all this we're trying to predict the future and obviously we are not always going to get it right Okay, this has brought us to the end and uh, here's your homework. The technique of using non or past data to predict the future is known as what? The dash uh, represents the expected growth rate of a country given that the resources are used fully. The dash of a business cycle is the difference in the value of total output between a peak and a trough. And lastly, discuss the trend line of uh, in the forecasting of business cycles. Well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Thank you for lasting up until the end of the lesson. And as always, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, I think it's very important that you do so. And also turn on that notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you get to see it. So let's get those distinctions. That's exactly what I want. Thank you so much. God bless you.